everyone. Coach Sullivan here again with MGS Coaching Football. Uh, to my subscribers, I thank you. And to those who haven't yet, I seriously hope that you do. Okay? I just completed my 38th year coaching football, and during that span, I've been an offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, a longtime head coach, and all of this at both the collegiate and high school levels. What I'd like to talk to you about today, I see we got quite a glare here on one side of the board. Sorry about that. Okay, let me try this over here. Well, I guess it's not going to help too, too much, but my apologies. we got some kind of glare going on over here today. Okay, I want to talk to you today about our one of our dog blitzes that we just call free dog. It's our free safety, and then we also execute that with a stick, so free dog stick. And I'm going to show it to you versus 11 and 10 personnel out of our base package. Okay, so not subscribers. You're going to have to push that button to see more about what all this means, okay? So what I have up top for you here is versus the 10 personnel, and down at the bottom I have it up versus 11 ball in the hash for a reason, as you'll see, okay? But specifically, what I want to talk to you first about are these key terms as it pertains to uh, a dog in general, in this particular case, free dog. All right, because it's going to bring in the rules and the assignments and the technique. And then we'll bring all of these to light over here in the diagram. Okay, so again, I'll make my apologies here. I'm the chief cook and bottle washer, so I'm also in charge of the lighting. And I'm going to fire myself today. All right, so first up, we have the term called decrash, which is the dog. Okay. So because it's a free dog, it's, it's an assigned name, it's the free. So the free executes it no matter what. There's a freebie for you. Ah, pun intended, non-subscribers. So that means he's the force and the cage blitzer, which means versus run, he's got force. Versus pass, he has outside cage. Okay, he has RP, which also means, therefore, that he has the boot. He plays for the quarterback on the boot, as well as... He will peel with a running black running back flare to him, which I'll show you. That's just one scenario. Okay. So then the second term is important. It's called the C scrape. And that's the first inside linebacker on the call side. And what he does is he reads the offensive tackle and goes butt side. So I'll, again, when we get to the diagram portion of this, I'll show you their, their landmarks, their aiming point and how this plays out. So the third thing is our Lucky Ringo, our blitz designation call. It's made by the free. As I've said in many a presentation, if the free doesn't know who they are, then woo, we got all kinds of trouble. But what will be involved is the screw timing, screw meaning moving toward the line of scrimmage because the safety's coming from significant depth. And they utilize what we call the creep technique to do that. Okay, so that's a big part of it, as you'll see. The key to this whole thing as far as what is the philosophy or the basis of the dog uh, family, four off the side. So how we accomplish four off the side will be a big part of the presentation and then how the stick tag changes it, but why we would use the stick tag. Okay, so hence, number five, stick tag. That is, the defensive end and the call side is now going to stick A, which bumps nose A away. So there's now only three off the side, but there's a reason why we would do that. Okay? So this is, I think you can see where this is working towards. The A-gap defenders are draw middle screen. Okay? So whoever the A-gap defenders are, because that will differ between a straight dog and a dog stick, they're playing for draw first, middle screen second. It's number seven, the B and C gap defenders have what we call running back sift, which is both screen as well as getting into the flat, you know, right off the edge. So we'll show you how we uh, cover that. So we have the running back accounted for, translation. So this is what I was just referring to. This is a pass situation blitz, number eight. It's not only a pass situation blitz because I have utilized it as a zone read or an RPO changeup. But it is predominantly pass situation blitz, okay? That's why we have such 
uh, designated pass responsibilities or even running plays like draw that go with a pass situation specified by gap responsibility. And then the last one here, I'll just give you an idea. I don't need to necessarily draw anything uh, extra. It's what we call a stick ball tag, which now the inside linebacker opposite the call will delay plug B gap. And you'll see how easy that is to, to tag, okay, because of what happens with the stick. All righty. So why don't we get going here? Up top, it's versus 10 personnel, okay? So we say versus 10, the kid, the player's make an even call because that impacts alignment rules. So not subscribers going to have to hit that subscribe button. This is what we call gun Detroit pistol. So it's, right, it's one back, no tight ends. Sorry, all right, so 10, we say even. That sets us up as far as... Outside, inside outside linebackers are concerned. And it's a pistol middle of the field. So why it's a Liz, no subscribers, okay? So I'm going to show you both the free dog trio and then with a stick tag, all right? So I will be illustrating all of this in blue, right? Blue for you. And so the other part of this I want to bring in, again, so non-subscribers, you're going to have to hit the button, okay? Corners are hot to one. Outside linebackers are hot to two, okay? So all I will say is in um, our trio coverage, which is anytime somebody in the secondary, so there you go, not subscribers, or an outside linebacker blitzes, these defenders are all reading surface first for run a pass, better run support, and then they're hot on their man. So that's kind of a freebie for you. But you'll also see how we spin the safeties so we're all heading in the correct direction, okay? So this is a free dog trio, and then I'll show it to you with the stick. So, well, first and foremost, the free safety screaming, lucky, lucky, lucky. Okay, it's a Liz, it's a lucky, because he goes to the pass strength. Why? Not subscribers. So the lucky call triggers the Louie call. So I'll play that, I'll go through that with you as this plays out, okay? So first and foremost, right, see, there we go, <clears throat> the creep technique, screw timing, right? We have what we call snap indicators. And so since this is in the gun, right, you have a lot more variety. Is it when they fist pump or point to the ground or lift the foot or clap? or bring their hands up to the itch, right? All the different things that happen, and that's where we as coaches come in and make that determination and then make sure the scout team executes that to near perfection on every rep. Okay, so for this presentation, I'm going to say when I drop my fist, that begins the screw timing. So it's the snap indicator that starts the process, okay? So the creep technique. Both safeties have a staggered stance, right? Their inside foot is up. So if they're on the left, the right foot's up. If they're on the right, the left foot's up. So the creep timing, which starts on the snap indicator, I mean the screw timing, which starts on the snap indicator, which then brings in the creep technique, right? They got their feet like this. So then it begins, okay? The up foot moves first. So ultimately, when they get in a position ready for the snap of the football, the get off has to be off the inside up foot. And we call the dig and a crossover. So as they get creep closer to the line of scrimmage and they get into that area, what I'll show you next, where we want them to be when the ball snapped, that inside, up inside heel needs to be off the ground so they can dig off the toe and cross over. Okay? So as far as a landmark, okay, two is detached, so they're going to be coming hard off the uh, tackle, right? As they screw down using the creep technique, we say be in between the inside linebacker and the heels of the defensive end. That's your landmark area. you got to give them tangible landmarks. This way, they'll never be offside. Freeze count won't affect them because he's seeing the football and he's going on the movement of the football. You see what I mean? 
And then on the snap of the ball, okay, his aiming point for the dog, the D crash, is the deepest tip in the backfield. Okay? So we want him as he – this is his area as far as how close to the line of scrimmage, but we want him to be about a yard outside the defensive end, roughly. We Don't, don't overcoach it. The kids will get um, brain cramps and they won't be able to execute. On the snap of the football, if he's a yard outside, roughly, he can head to that deepest landmark because, remember, he's got force on run. He's got cage on pass. He's got to be able to play the boot and peel with a running back flair. So that's his landmark because he's the dog. Okay, D crash. All righty. So first thing before I do anything else, on that running back flare, this is the only scenario that will get him to peel. The running back does that, whether it's pass, that's the blitz speed or flare route, or it's speed option, and he's the pitch back. When the running back flares to him, that's the one situation that he will peel with that running back flare. That's it. Okay, because, again, he's force, he's cage, and in this case, that's the blitz beater. If a team's prepared for us and they see it coming, the quarterback dumps it off, you peel, we get a nice tackle for loss. Okay? So that's that portion of it. And also... Here's number one off the side. Remember, four off the side. So now let's talk about the C-script. Okay. First inside linebacker call side. So it's the backer in this case. So he's screaming, Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo. So they're communicating with each other. All right. So now in the snap of the ball, C-scrape, his landmark is the outside of the tackle. It's not a read. He's scraping there from the snap of the football, hence C scrape. So then what's meant by <coughs> read OT, go butt side, what we see mostly is the tackle's going to what we call Slater set, looking to the outside. So then the butt side would be right there in the B gap. That, that's all it means. And if the tackle were looking this way, he'd stay outside. Okay, but there is number two. So to accomplish the four off a side, defensive end call side, slants B, no slants A to the call. There's three, there's four. That's how we get the four off a side. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do right now is on the snap, and it doesn't happen until the snap, Lucky triggered Louie, the safety away from the call and snap the ball, right? Middle third. He's rotating middle. So the safeties are spinning in the direction of the blitz, okay? If he creeps down, he might be seen. If he doesn't move, it doesn't tip the quarterback off. The quarterback sees both safeties moving, whoop, whoop, right? So that's why we don't do it. So that's how we get four off the side. So now we start talking about A-gap defenders, right? Here's one. He's got the draw. Inside linebacker away from the call. Well, he's got running back two, right? So we can get rid of that for a second. So now he is running back to him or draw. So there's your other A-gap defender. Okay? So... Running back flares, he peels. Running back comes, goes away from the dog. He's got it no matter what. That's his no matter what. Okay? If the running back fits in protection to the dog, right, now he's playing the draw. If there is no draw because he's in the protection, then he mirrors the cue. So we let the offensive scheme dictate our responsibility. Running back's not to him, then he's working for draw. He's in protection. It's, there is no draw, then he's going to mirror the kill. He's an extra guy assigned to the quarterback because there's nobody to cover. Okay? Defensive end away. 
He has outside cage also. Okay, outside cage. Pretty makes sense so far, I hope. So that's how that works. So now let me show you the stick tag. And the only change in the stick tag. Right, so stick tag, defensive end call side, sticks A. I know some programs call that a long stick. That's a stick to us. We eliminate the word long, okay, which bumps nose A away. So now you only have three off the side. But why we would do this, we are really, really expecting either draw or middle screen with a running back, teams that have that tendency. We'll give up the fourth off the side to be more secure there. Not to mention, he should now be unblocked, so he'd be a third defender available to play that draw or middle screen. Okay? That's why we would call it. And so then the stick ball, remember I talked about that. He's doing that all the time, defensive end away. So see how the B-gap's now available? So the reason why we would call do it a delay, no pivot, we say let the protection set itself. So you're likely to get something like that, and then the B-gap becomes available. Then shoot it. Add to it. And we would call a stick ball tag when a team has shown they're going to be a six-man protection, meaning they're going to keep the running back in the block. Okay? And so when that happens, we'll bring the extra guy. We'll see if, you, you know, you can't pick up everybody. So now we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six block and six, somebody should come clean. And that's where reading and going butt side comes in. Let the protection set itself. You're not supposed to be bright. That's why we do it. So now down here, I'm just going to show you the exact same thing without the same amount of detail because it doesn't change. Just now, purposefully, I have the free safety executing the dog off a tight end. Okay, so how that may potentially changes things. So when ball's on the hash, here we go, nine subscribers, but I don't mind saying, right, he's called the field corner because ball on the hash, he automatically goes to field. Free safety, F, goes to field. Boundary, he's called the boundary corner. He goes into the boundary with the whip, right? There it is. Boom, done. So ball on the hash, this is FIB, formation into boundary. So it's a Liz. Yeah, nine subscribers. You're going to have to see why the personnel is lined up the way they are. It's a Ringo, which becomes a Roger, so the same creep technique, boop, right? So now his feet are switched, his left foot's up, so now it's this, right? The landmark becomes the same, inside linebacker, but now it's heels of your outside linebacker. Stay a yard outside or so, ball snapped. Same landmark, there it is. So you're just a little bit wider outside because there's a tight end, that's it. That's the only difference, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. <clears throat> so now, just to show you a little bit of a change, we'll say we're getting a full slide. And so now the running back is fitting in, trying to block the edge. So how does that impact things? Michigan now, because he's on the side of the call, right? Up there was Buffalo. Now it's Michigan. That's his code name. Now C scrape stays butt side because the butt side's in C gap. Right? Butt side's in C gap. So the running back has to choose who it's going to be. It's most likely the safety will appear first, which will make him available to blitz. He picks up the C scrape, the dog is available on the blitz. Okay, again, DN call side, straight dog, right? There's one, two, three, four off the side. Right, running back goes away, no draw, mirror the cue. Outside cage, ball snap, rotate middle, right? There it is. Stick tag. DN call side, stick A, bump nose away. Again, there it is, right? Stick ball tag. This one I'll draw her up for you. On a stick ball tag, right? Now he is delay plug B. And this is stick ball tag.
So now he will do what he always does, right? Brings play side foot up, read surface, pivot to two, let it set itself, then plug A gap. There it is. Be the extra guy. If they're going to keep him in, we're going to blitz you. All right? So that is our free dog with a stick tag as well as a stick ball tag. So as I said at the beginning to my subscribers, I thank you. And to non-subscribers, I hope I made the point. And I also like to thank YouTube. But to everybody, please reach out to me at CoachMJSullivan at gmail.com. It's starting to happen when it does. I'm learning. I'm hoping the people on the other side of the screen are learning. And that's what this is all about.